after the successes of Stars, Stripes and Slams, it's time to move on to our next pay-per-view. Hello there and welcome to episode 7 of USPW Demo. What the save where we run the three months of the demo with United States Pro Wrestling just to get used to the game, see what we can do before we go big with from then to now in when the game comes out and when a, and, and when a mod is ready. I'm not going to guarantee that, the, that the, from then to now will be out on Saturday. It, this save will continue until I think a mod is ready for from then to now. That, that's a clarification I am making straight up. But, we're after the pay-per-view. I've got a few things set up to start for the next pay-per-view. Everyone's here tonight, so we're not going to give them the day off. We ran the pay-per-view in Texas, so I think we stay in Texas. We were in El Paso. Let's go to Houston. Nothing, no incidents, no broadcast needs to do. Let's go for our team meeting and we get all the way up to our 250 cap. I mean, this is too easy. Let's get a storyline idea. Big gamble, that's a shame. A gimmick idea. Big bit of a gamble, that's annoying. A creative finish. Big gamble, which Julius Moore needs to win. So let's put his name on there. Will we probably use it? It's a big gamble. I doubt it. And a character idea. A likely to succeed character. Nice. And that means we're all good. Locker room incident. Clutch McLean got ribbed because he's being influenced by Tyson Bain. Interesting. Glorious Gloria went to Wrestler's Court. Didn't go out. Tut tut. And um, Morgan Malone and Jamie Quine are getting on. Regular Joe has an angle, I angle idea. Interesting. It's regular. I, I like that. I kind of want lower card guys coming to me pitching ideas because. I like using the person who pitches them in those angles. So it gets them on TV if it works. And with someone like regular Joe, chances are an angle he's in is not going to be great anyway. So I'm more willing to take a risk. Let's do our team bonding. As you know, let's do an open forum. Danny DeFranks, Jalewski, Melody, Running Wolf. Elizabeth Cartier, Sarah Murray, Pariah, Jack Jackson, Lionel Greenwood, and Anthony Trask all got a small morale boost. That's the pre-show completed. Let's book the show. And we kick things off with the return of Belle Bryden. As our commentators come out before the show, Belle Bryden's back. She had a day off for the pay-per-view to deal with personal issues. She is back for you know, American wrestling, though. We're in Houston, Texas for the show, as we said earlier. Get a 62 for our commentators coming out. And we open up with a 95 rated, 94 rated promo segment. As Nikki Champion comes out, and he starts cutting this promo about how he's happy that he's defeated Rich Money because he wants to face somebody new now. He wants someone he's not faced before. Someone fresh. He wants to feel like USPW is moving forward as a company. Not just clinging on to these relics of the past. Of course, you can't always get what you wish for, so out comes his forever rival, Steve Fraley. Yeah, we're doing Fraley versus Champion, because why the hell not, honestly? Yeah, Fraley versus Champion. 
big matchup for the main event of the next show. But, again, it's part of this storyline of Nicky Champion wanting to face someone new, but getting someone he's faced many times before. Again, 94 though. 88 just for Champion Tomorrow and a 95 for the face-off. Shows that the people do want to see Champion versus Fraley still. We get a quick video package for Sarah Marie. Just We haven't used her yet, so I thought we'd give her a video package as it's post-pay-per-view. Start cycling her in, maybe. And the opening match of the night is the tag team title match. As Julius Moore and DC Rain lose to bad intentions of Tial Valhalla and Bash Street. After Bash Street taps out Julius Moore, well, makes him pass out after whacking him in the head with a steel pipe. So, yeah, he's out cold and then locks in the submission. So, he gets to claim the victory. 57 wrestling rating, 59 crowd rating, 66 overall. Pretty good segment. And after the match, we get a brawl as the American Gold come out. Essentially to save Julius Moore, but it's a big brawl. They fight off Bash Street, Siavahala, and Zeus comes out as well. So it's a th three versus two brawl. DC Rain and Julius Moore are selling. So they're not really involved. But we've got our, our new tag team contenders are there. And they're already, they're starting into the feud. Featuring the tag champs. Another video promo here as Jack Cha Jackson. Picks up. Just tells us. Just gives us a little bit of hype towards him. Gets a 54. Bill Brynan, well, she's making her return big as she's got some interviewing to do today. She does this in the ring and it's Alina America. She's got a match later on, the tag team match. But before we do that, we're just going to ask her a couple of questions. And Alina's talking about how Tiffany Jade gave her the fight of her life. She was dangerous, she was violent. But she's not the champion. Because despite everything that she threw at me, Alina America still walked out of Stars, Stripes and Slams. Your USPW Women's Champion. So yes, Tiffany, I take you seriously now. I always did. But you can't. You're not the person to beat me. Gets a 69. Pretty nice. We go backstage. And Steve Fraley is is talking to a camera. And he says. Nikki you want to escape this. But you can't. This is USPW. It's me versus you. This will never end. Because I am the only one who can beat you. For that USPW title. And honestly, you're probably the only one who could beat me for it. There is nobody on our level. It's me and you. And it's lonely up at the top. And it just so happens the only other person here is a dickhead like you, Nicky. So yeah, I am going to be pissed at you all the time. I am going to not like you. I am going to come after you every chance I get. Because there's no one else even on our level. It's me and you. Basically, just giving a justification as to why we're going back to this feud. But also addressing this whole fact that there's not really anyone new in the main event scene of USPW right now. Is that a teaser? Who knows? We get a pre-tape angle as Casey Valentine and Jan Danny Jeffsky announce something new. Well, not something new, but... Something very old, but a different twist on it. Because I've decided my gimmick for the national championship is that every single number one contender has to be decided in a unique match. 
So here, we're announcing the U30 Fatal 4-Way. A Fatal 4-Way of four wrestlers, all of whom under the age of 30. This was pre-taped, so we go straight into that match. And it gets a 58 as Anthony Trask, Funky Fedora, Jack Jackson and Leaf LeBalm fight. And it is Funky Fedora who picks up the win after interference from Rich Money. Someone who definitely isn't under 30, as we made very clear in the last feud. But yes, yeah, so Funky Fedora pins Leaf LeBalm with the top rope knee drop. Jackson and Trask brawl with each other to stay out of this. And afterwards, Rich Money come, grabs the mic and he announces that he chose Funky Fedora to be his protege. Funky Fedora has helped him out backstage. And now he wants to return the favour. He wants to help him use his experience to benefit this company. Because Rich Money's a philanthropist, didn't you know? He cares about you. It's a shame you're all just stinking paws. Casey Valentine grabs a mic from where he's been sat at ringside and goes, Look, Funky, I wish this was supposed to be representing the youth of USPW and somehow... We're still here focusing on a man in his late field 40s. I wish it hadn't gone down like this. But I will fight you because that's what I agreed on. Once again, playing up the aging main event scene of USPW. Guess it's 77. Gain teat on the what you know versus who you know story. And let's get through it and let's move on. Glorious Gloria picks up a victory and it's just a quick match against Sweet Danny Adams. It's a continuation from the angle they did a couple of weeks ago in the eight-man tag. Sweet Danny Adams trying to get revenge for being the loser in that match. Doesn't work. She loses again here. It's a 47 wrestling, a 49 crowd and a 53 overall. And Pariah then comes out to save Sweet Danny Adams because the entire Triumvirate starts beating her down. So Pariah comes out with a steel chair and does the classic chasing them all off spot. It's the one we've all seen before. Even though there's three of them versus one, they all run away because the steel chair is that dangerous. Rick Laws being interviewed by Tom Townsend. You know, back back on to interviews jobs after his one appearance on Colour. And Rick Laws just being interviewed and in comes Eddie Howard. And he starts talking about, Rick, you've been here for how long? Like, I've been here around quite a while. But even then, I'm only now starting to prove myself as a single star. You've been this attempted single star for a while. And yet you've been a failure. You've never been able to make it to the top, have you? You've tried many times. And yet, you're stuck in the middle. And every time new people come in, your, your, your standing slips further and further. You failed, Rick. That's all, that's all there is to it. And he just walks out and Tom asks Rick if he has any comments. He doesn't and he also walks out. The tag match we set up last week between Aaliyah America and Pariah versus Jamie Quine and Tiffany Jade. Pariah pins Tiffany Jade with a Tornado DDT. The match tells the sto tells a story. It's the baby faces working together whilst the heels don't seem to get on the same page. And, and that is what leads to the victory. 
And unfortunately, at that point, without telling me, my recording decided to cut out. So for the last two angles on that show, we had an interview with Trent Schaffer, where he called out Running Wolf for being a coattail rider for Nicky Champion, and saying that he is only gets put in the positions he's in because of nepotism, which got a 58 rating. Before our main event match, saw Rich Money and Sterling Whitlock defeat Casey Valentine and Regular Joe when Rich Money pinned Regular Joe with the money in the bank after Casey Valentine was attacked by Funky Fedora. Went just under 15 minutes, 14.30. Got a 66. And overall, the show got a 68. If my memory is correct, it gained us in 24 and 28 and lost us in 24 regions. Which is pretty standard for what we get expected at the moment. It actually is the best TV show we have booked, only being behind Star Stripes and Slams overall. But I obviously didn't want you to miss out on the ending of this episode because my computer decided to clock to mess around. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Apologies about the weird ending. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.